Yeah. Welcome back to Fisher Sports Desk. I'm your host, Justin Miles, for this edition of the show. Today we're going to dive into everything fall athletics for St. John Fisher College Cardinals. The top story from this past weekend is the Empire 8 championship winning women's tennis team. Earlier last week, they earned the number one seed in the tournament for the first time in their team's history. On Friday, they took on number four seed Houghton College, sweeping them five sets to zero, and repeated the same scoreline on Saturday as they defeated number two seed rivals Nazareth College. Kaylee Saffron and Cassidy Bell continued their dominance as well as Michaela Santulli, who won the tournament MVP honors for her performances over this weekend. This gives them a berth in the NCAA tournament and their season will continue in March. Women's volleyball competed in four matches on Friday and Saturday, which with split results, they ended 2-2 two to two on the weekend. All four games were in New Jersey as they beat Catholic and Hunter College while facing defeats against Stevens and Keene University. The second two matches were a part of the North Jersey Challenge where Aaliyah Stegerwald continued to impress and was named to the all-tournament team. They look to keep their perfect conference record as they face Elmira next. Field hockey had games on Friday and Sunday, facing off against conference opponents Sage on Friday and showing their offensive prowess in a 10-0 thumping. Free soccer scored four goals for the second time this season, while Lindsey Scott recorded seven assists, as well as a goal. The tally marked the most goals scored in one match in program history. On Sunday, they traveled to Vermont to face number one in the nation, an NCAA reigning champions, Middlebury, where they suffered a 2-1 defeat. In the defeat, Kelly Bergamo made a career-high 11 saves, keeping the Cardinals in the contest until the very end. Field hockey has a midweek conference game against Elmira as they look to stay unbeaten in conference play. Men's and women's cross-country both finished in first place in this past weekend's ESF Mighty Oak invite. Both teams had five racers finish in the top ten, including a first place finish from freshman Riley Corey. Her time 1951 in the 5,000 meter race led the way for the Cardinals in their first place finish. Both teams had two weeks to prepare for the Empire 8 tournament as they will host it. Men's soccer encountered a wild game with East Ab rivals in Nazareth in the annual Battle of the Beaks. Minimal chances were traded at either end in the first half, but the biggest story of the first half were the three ejections. As two Nazareth players and one Fisher player were shown red cards, this gave Fisher a 10 on 9 advantage on Nazareth heading into the second half. This didn't stop the Golden Flyers, however, from scoring as they scored just 30 seconds into the second period. The Cardinals attacked for the majority of the remainder of the half as Justin Bonetto led the team with six shots. On the afternoon, Fisher found the equalizer with less than two minutes to go in regulation as Brendan Brown strike beat Nazareth's goalkeeper to the near post. Nazareth had the better of opportunities in overtime, but neither team could find a breakthrough, and the game ended in a draw. The Cardinals improved their conference record to 1-1-2 as they traveled to Elmira this weekend in another decisive conference game. Women's soccer fought to a third tie in the conference on Saturday as their game against Utica ended 2-2. Two, two. two first half goals put the Cardinals in a good position, but the Pioneers found an answer in the second half. Tying the game in regulation, the overtime period couldn't find a winner and the two had to settle for a draw. The Cardinals stay unbeaten in conference and they face Sage this coming weekend in the season's penultimate contest. Fisher improved to 4-3 on Saturday with a 49-21 defeat over the Hartwick Hawks. Hunter Wallace completed 24 of 34 passes on the day for 365 yards and three touchdowns. Demir Pross ran for uh, over 100 yards while also punching in two touchdowns of his own. Receivers Tashan Sizer and Will Blake both tallied over 100 yards, including a 96-yard touchdown for Sizer. The Cardinals defense forced four turnovers, including an interception for Jason Rodriguez, putting him on six for the season. The Cardinals have a home conference game this weekend as they host the Cortland Red Dragons. The women's rowing team raced at the 55th annual Head of the Charles Regatta, Fisher's team with one of over 2,000 entries and over 700 clubs. Their time of 21-10 in the race earned them a 34th place finish. Both men's and women's team will travel to Philadelphia this coming weekend to compete in the Head of the Cycle. Come up next, an interview with Fisher men's soccer defender Aaron Wilkins as we get his take on the rivalry matchup against Nas and what's to come for the team. 150 over 90. 180 over 111. 160 over 110. I had a stroke. This is what high blood pressure looks like. You might not feel its symptoms, but the results from a stroke are far from invisible or silent. If you've come off your treatment plan, get back on it or talk with your doctor to create an exercise, diet, and medication plan that works for you. Go to loweryourhbp.org. If I would have followed a treatment plan, I would not be in this situation. 
I'm joined by Aaron Wilkins, senior defender for the men's soccer team here at Fisher. How are you doing, Aaron? Good, how are you? Doing all right. Tell me a little bit about the game this weekend. How did the refereeing and the ejections in the first half affect the game? It changed the whole complexity of the game. You couldn't really play soccer anymore. We were more worried about players getting ejected and worried about playing our own game when you couldn't really go into tackles hard. It kind of made it a little difficult, but you always have to play around how the refs are roughing the game. Obviously, those ejections changed kind of the system that you guys were playing. And you went into the second half 10 on 9 with a one man advantage. How did you rally from getting scored on such an early goal in the second half? We just realized that this game is really important to us. They're our rivals. They're down a player. We have the advantage. So we kind of took back control of the game, started dominating possession, which allowed us to kind of get up tempo a little more and start getting more chances against them. You kind of touched on it a little bit right there, but how much does that tie mean for your season, for the big picture? It means a lot. We've lost to Naz the past two years, been heartbreaking losses, one goal. And this year, we, we knew that they were since they were the top team in the conference, we needed a good outcome against them to elevate us in the standings. And to get a tie was definitely felt good, especially against Naz. Always, always a fun game. So what do you guys now need to focus on moving forward? And you have two games remaining. You're still fighting for a spot in the conference. We just got to keep calm and cool heads. We understand the situation that we're in. There's a possibility of we're in a pretty good spot, but we kind of need to win out if we really want to gain a home field advantage for the Empire 8 tournament. So we just got to stay focused on the task at hand and not worry about what's going on outside of the game and what the next game is. We just got to focus on ourselves. Thank you so much for joining us today, and good luck the rest of the season. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Justin Miles. Catch you next time on Fisher Sports Desk.